back with Kenneth Branagh, writer and director of the new film, Belfast. The movie captures so beautifully, um, and I don't think I'm giving anything away, that it starts off in modern Belfast. Yes, the correct. very opening is uh, helicopter or drone shots. Yeah. Really quite lovely shots of modern day Belfast. Yeah. And, and then it becomes a black and white movie as it right. passes over one of the dividing walls, one of mm -hmm. sort of the, what do they call this name for them? Well, they're, they're the peace walls. The peace walls. Peace it goes walls. over the a peace interface wall. between the two communities. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's 1969 and it's black and white on the other side. And it really captures that sort of before time that so many people have as memories of their childhood, especially a trauma, childhood that happened before a trauma. Yeah. That loses yeah. some of its color as a result. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am not Irish, okay? My family is Irish. I'm an American through and through. But everyone in my family is Irish. We've been Irish for five generations that we've been over here. Yeah. And as a child, I heard about the troubles from my parents. They were talking about it all the time because I'm just a little, few years younger than you are. And I felt kind of bad when I first got into the movie because I thought Belfast had only carried this sense of dread to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. only these stories of the sectarian violence. And it's such a beautiful valentine. Yeah. to your hometown, which I was incredibly moved by, and I kind of felt bad that I hadn't thought better of your hometown. Well, you know, it's a complex history, you know, to that yep. part of the world and to that city, and there are, you know, there are plenty of sorrows, but there are incredible numbers of joys, and I'd say that one coping mechanism is a very, you know, sort of robust humour. Uh, they, love, they love laughter, they love music. Uh, well, that's what I was saying to John just a little while ago, is that the movie is so funny and so sad at the same time, and I've never seen anything so Irish in my life. Yeah, well, you're, I think that's, that's very well put. The, it was, it, you showed it at the Belfast Film Festival when? We went last week to the Belfast Film Festival. It was the first night. We had 1,400 people watching it. That in itself, back in the new post-pandemic world, was a very moving thing. Uh, and it was an absolutely electrifying atmosphere. I don't think, you know, sometimes you get a chance to go back and share a story. One of many, mm -hmm. everybody, man, woman and child in Belfast has, has a yarn and they're all worth a listen, I can tell you that. Uh, but this particular one they gave their ears to on that night. And as we all walked on afterwards, they stood up as one and cheered. And it was a, a, really one of the most beautiful nights of my, of my life. And my does brother it, was there and my sister was there. Does it ton of cousins. still feel like your hometown? Yes, you know, you can take the boy out of Belfast, but you can't take Belfast out of the boy. Um, and I think that one of the things the film says, it's because it's, it's a lot of it is about leaving, and a lot of people understand it. I've been very moved by people from around the world. An Iranian filmmaker who came to see it came out and said, that's my story. A Nigerian came out and said, that's my story. But I think that what the story sort of suggests and hopes you can do is, you know, take your home with you. If your home is meaningful to you, and I think where we start is meaningful to us, even if we have to let it go or go back and live in it in a slightly different way, or sometimes maybe just carry it inside us. Mm -hmm. And of course, home isn't necessarily the bricks and mortar, although in this case it partly is, but it's family. Home is family. And, you know, we had the usual kind of beautiful, dysfunctional family. Uh, it was where I lived was not an idyll, but it was unquestionably a home and uh, going back and, and touching that and feeling that and hearing the music of it, the music of the language, the music of the accents and everything was really, was a, was a wonderful thing to be able to do. Well, your movie family is extraordinary too. Uh, Kieran Hines, Judy Dench play your grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jamie Dornan, uh, Katrina Balf play your, play your parents. Yeah. And, and the, the, uh, your alter ego yeah. has played this extraordinary young actor named Jude Hill, who was just nine years old when he was cast. Um, what's, it like directing, what's it like directing someone that young? Is it, is it the same, like if you can say it to a 50-year-old, you should be able to say it to a nine-year-old? Oh, it's such an interesting question that, you know, I'm, I think I'm still working it out, actually. What we, uh, what we are hoping to do is, is make the, the movie as real as possible, as unacted as possible. And so one of the virtues of getting a nine-year-old boy is if, if, in his case, he could do this, if he could just be in the moment and present and listen, half the performance was reacting. And he had that gift. He wasn't too nervous, and he was able to watch. He's at that point in his child development where his absorption of new things was so huge, including the acting process from watching people like Judy Dench and, uh, and the others. And so, 
he, he, the only problem I had with him, actually, was, was two things. First, for the first two days, he couldn't stop looking at the camera. He kept sneaking a look. Whenever, whenever he did a scene, he'd do that, and he'd think he was rather good, and then he'd just catch, just to see if, just to, just to see if, if they'd, they'd seen his good side. Um, and then after two days, I said, you can't keep looking there. He said, where shall I look? I said, look at Judy Dench. She's ever so interesting. And so um, he looked at that. And the other thing he, could, he, he couldn't do, um, he's, a, he's a passionate soccer fan. You know, lot, every, you know many people back home are and uh, so Liverpool Football Club are, are the, the club that he supports my childhood self and indeed my my ancient self is a fan of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club which which features thank you oh there's some Tottenham fans in here somewhere somewhere you're the other two um the uh, the, and so uh, he had to, on a couple of occasions, suggest that he was loyal to Tottenham Hotspur, and he wouldn't do it. In rehearsal, he wouldn't do it. It was the one thing he put his foot down about. I thought he was going to stomp off back to his trailer. He said, I can't do it. Can't do it. I'll do, I'll do it when we do the tick, but I'm not doing it in rehearsal. Um, <laughs> so, so, it's only, you got to have boundaries. <laughs> you got to have boundaries. <laughs> and Tottenham and Liverpool were the boundaries. Wow. Well, Kenneth, thank you so much for being thank here. You, thank you. And thank you for this remarkable film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Belfast is in theaters tomorrow. Kenneth Braun, everybody. We'll be right back with Ellie Kemper.